All right, guys, here it is, the Canon EOS R6. What's up, guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. Hope you all are having a great day. First off, I just wanna say thanks so much for all the support on the last video. It really does mean a lot. Two videos in two weeks, it's crazy. It's all new Connor, throwing out videos left and right. Can we keep up with this? Probably not, but you know, we got an exciting video today. We have a new package arriving, so we'll be unboxing that when it gets here, but it's Saturday morning. We need a little fuel to kick off the day, so you know what that means. Did you miss me? Did my package come? Oh, look at here. Look what came in. Look what came in. What in the world? Did you do this? Hey. Yeah, you. Did you do that? Jeez, all right. Well, let's go open this the rest of the way up. So, I don't know if you can hear that, but that's not good. But hopefully that's not important stuff. We'll find out. Yeah, hear this? That doesn't sound good. All right guys, here it is, the Canon EOS R6. Really excited to finally have this camera. I actually pre-ordered the R5 when it first got announced and then canceled it after all of the overheating concerns and people just weren't too sure if it was gonna be everything that was hyped up to be. And quite honestly, the big reason why I canceled that pre-order was the type of shooting that we do. Now, obviously the R5 is gonna work for some people. And actually with the new software updates, it sounds like it's not as big of a deal as a lot of people thought it would be. But with the type of shooting that we do, we do a lot of sports, fitness, outdoors, running gun type shooting. Um, as well as shooting for a NASCAR team. That's one of our big ones. And when we're out at the track and it's 70, 80 degrees outside in the sun and you're running around all day trying to get shots, getting a ton of footage, that just wasn't a practical option for us. We couldn't risk having our camera overheat in that type of situation. But we thought it was time to make an upgrade from our prior GH5 system into something new. So we actually ended up picking up the 1DX Mark II, which is what I'm filming this on. And it's been a great camera. It handles photo and video both really, really well. It gives us all the specs that we need and it gives us the ability to upgrade into Canon glass, which is something that we were really excited about and has really made a big improvement. Uh, shooting on Canon glass, it's, uh, it's definitely a big improvement from the Micro Four Thirds system. We still had one GH5 in inventory and we were doing a 1TX with the GH5 and it just wasn't really working. So. It was time to upgrade, it was time to get something new to complement the 1DX Mark II, and we thought about getting a second 1DX Mark II because they're a pretty good price point used right now for right around $3,000. 
considering that they still go new for 4,500. So we looked into that, but we thought it might be nice to have something that's just a little different that might offer a few different specs, uh, you know, might complement the 1DX a little better where there may be some flaws in that camera. So after much thinking and researching, we decided to go with the R6. And I think this is actually gonna be perfect for us. It offers, it complements the 1DX really nicely in that it's a smaller camera, a little more compact design. It offers a flip out screen, which is great. That's definitely one con with the 1DX. It's not a huge issue, but when you come from a GH5 and you're always just used to using this, being able to shoot, you know, kind of with this thing tilted, I feel like a lot of people do that. You shoot this position. Um, going into the 1DX, it, it was a little more difficult to get used to, but I think this will complement it really nicely. It still offers 4K 60, which we shoot in a lot. And also it doesn't crop in 4K. That's one thing, honestly, I didn't even realize that the 1DX did that, or maybe I read it somewhere and kind of forgot, but the 1DX actually crops in 4K and the R6 doesn't. So that's definitely one plus of the R6 over the 1DX. Another great thing I think about the R6 is the IBIS is a little better than the 1DX. So it kind of wins in that category. Combined on a gimbal, which this will run way better on a gimbal than the 1DX does. This can be a solid option for us to run on the Ronin S. Another thing that I love about this that I'm seeing, which makes it very similar to the GH5 is this dial right here. See, the 1DX doesn't have that. The GH5 I loved because it had these custom shooting options, which I'm now seeing is the same here in the R6. So you have a C1, a C2, and a C3. So you can just flip between those. So on the GH5, we just set C1 as 4K24, C2 as 4K60, and then C3 as 1080 120 and it makes it super fast and easy to be able to just switch shooting, shooting modes without having to go into the menu and mess around with that. So really excited about that with, with the R6 here. Definitely also feels really good in the hand. Like I know a lot of people talk about that and you, you don't really understand what it means until you actually hold the camera. But as you can see, my fingers fit really well on this grip. My pinky doesn't hang off like it did on the GH5. So just in the hand, this thing feels really stable, really solid, and it's very comfortable just to hold right here. Uh, let's go ahead and throw a lens on here and kind of see how this thing looks. Okay, so one thing to consider, I changed my camera angle there a little bit, by the way, so you can kind of see things on my desk here better. But since we have a 1DX already and we had been investing in EF glass, we don't have any RF glass, so we need the adapter, which this camera we actually bought used, and I'll talk about everything uh, that came with it and how much we paid and everything a little bit later in the video. But anyway, we got the EF to RF adapter here so we can throw this lens on the body. Um, not sure exactly how this works, but we'll figure it out. This looks like the, R the EF part of it. So this looks like it goes on the lens like this. Hopefully, um, I didn't just destroy the sensor by doing that, but that looks right. Yeah, see that fits. See, you can kind of tell the EF lens caps are have the ridges like this, and the RF lens caps have the thinner ridges. So it's kind of nice to know that like this is the RF, and uh, this is the older style. You can tell that's the EF, so that kind of makes it easy. Um, let's take this off of here, throw on this hog of a lens. So this is the 24 to 105 and um, let's throw that on there. So that feels pretty solid. This looks like a weapon, um, <laughs> kind of looks badass, but let's flip this guy on and we did no card in the camera, but that's okay. So this display definitely is smaller than the 1DX and it's definitely smaller, smaller than the R5 as well. I think this is three, could be completely wrong, but it could be 3.2 instead of 3.4 or something like that, but slightly smaller. And you do kind of notice because almost looks like there's a black frame around the screen. 
that like doesn't really need to be there. It looks like it's part of the LCD screen there, but it's it doesn't work, it doesn't light up. So it's kind of strange, but all the buttons basically look to be the same. You know, you got the thumb scroll, you got the finger scroll. Those are, there's probably more technical terms for those, but that's what I'm gonna call them. Finger scroll, thumb scroll. Um, and then you got the dial on the back. So very similar to the One DX. I know the R5, I don't think you have the joystick on the back of the R5. So on this one, you have the joystick, you have the dial. Um, looks very similar um, to the One DX for the most part, other than the buttons on the bottom, but pretty comparable, I guess. I can show you something kind of cool here. You could compare it. Hands team. Um, to the ancient 70D. So here's the 70D versus the R6. So you can kind of see a similarity in the menus there. You can definitely tell, let's take a look here. You have, oh, the only difference is there's this rate button back here instead of the info. So the menu is bumped over one. So this is normally the menu, but it says rate. And then the menu is here. Normally that's info. So that's one difference. That's gonna take some getting used to that play and trash button seems similar, and I thought it was from the 70D, but it must be from the 1DX. Um, other than that, these actually are very different. I thought they were more similar, but very different. Um, if anyone wants a 70D, hit me up, get you a good price on that, because definitely don't use that anymore. But this feels solid. This feels really, really good. Um, we got, where's the white balance? That's the one thing. We don't have a white balance button. So the 1DX actually has a white balance button, which is awesome. Uh, I don't see one on here. Also, it has an ISO button, which you can configure. So the ISO actually is the thumb scroll here on this, which is nice. On the 1DX, I believe you have to hit the ISO and then scroll. You can't preset a dial on the 1DX. Oh, that was, okay, that's cool. Another thing I'm noticing about this is it has a, uh, actually has a level on the LCD. So I don't know if the 1DX has that. Help me out in the comments if it does, but I haven't been able to find it. So I don't know if the 1DX has the level overlay on the screen, but this has it right here. So that's, that's really nice. Uh, that's definitely something that feel like I kind of struggle with sometimes. I'm like shooting, I'm like completely crooked. So that's great uh, to see in here. Let's go ahead, metering mode. There's a lot of autofocus uh, settings in here. Wow. Okay, so you just hit Q over here to basically switch between all of your settings. So you have white balance comes up, picture style, aspect ratio you can change, um, drive mode, metering mode white balance, picture display, or picture style. So you can basically change any setting with just click of a button and then the thumb dial, and then the thumb dial here on the back. So that's really great. So one thing I see here, I switch over into 4K60, and the one difference that this has compared to the 1DX is it doesn't shoot true cinema 4K, I guess you could call it. Um, this is 3840 by 2160, which is exactly what the GH5, 3840 versus 4196. Honestly, not that big of a difference. And I think the quality that comes out of this compared to the 1DX is very comparable. If not, maybe a little better, but we will see. We'll test this out, see how it looks. Excited to have another Canon body in our inventory and start working with this a little more. This does take uh, regular SD cards. So we're back to that, um, back to the old SD cards in this guy, um, rather than the CFast cards in the 1DX. But yeah, this looks good. Um, I think this image stabilization is gonna be crazy. I'm really excited to test this out. Hopefully I get to test it very soon. All right, so let's talk about price. I mentioned that a little before that this was not a brand new camera. It's actually used. So let's talk a little bit about that. I was going to buy it brand new. It's $2,500 brand new compared to the R5, which I think is like 5,000. And I was just not going to do that. The reason why I didn't buy the R5 instead of the R6, which I'll probably make a separate video about that. But basically there's two reasons, 8K raw and 4K 120 
are basically the only differences between these two cameras, essentially. More megapixels, yes, but I didn't need 45 megapixels, okay? So 45 megapixels, 8K RAW, and 4K 120 weren't worth another $2,500 to me. And honestly, I probably wouldn't use them that much. So I figured this was plenty for me. For $2,500, 4K 60, no crop, 1080 120, in-body image stabilization, 20 megapixels, solid. Very good, great camera, complements the 1DX Mark II nicely, and for $2,500, this is a great value. And honestly, I'm gonna shoot with this, I'll probably review it and let you guys know what I think, but I'm happy with this. After doing some research, buying the 1DX Mark II, pre-ordering the R5, canceling the pre-order of the R5, seeing the c70 come out and then ended up buying the r6 i think this is a great option i think this is a great setup and it's well worth it for the money for 2500 dollars. i think this is a solid solid camera now this isn't brand new i know it's this is actually a used camera so what happened was i needed this piece right here i needed the ef to rf adapter before anything because it's sold out everywhere right if you're trying to get one right now it's really hard you're probably scrounging around ebay or facebook marketplace so what i did was i reached out to the i think the canon eos r facebook group and i had I, I basically said hey is anyone selling an extra ef to rf lens adapter because i need one before i buy the r6 because if i buy the r6 and can't get an adapter then you know it's useless because i have all ef glass so i reached out i was like hey i'm getting the r6 soon i need the ef to rf adapter because i have all ef glass is anyone selling one and two guys actually reached out and said hey yeah i have the adapter you know 100 or it retails for like a hundred dollars so they're gonna sell it to me for like 80. so i said great they both said hey I also have an R6. I see that you're going to buy one. Would you be interested in buying mine? So they sent pictures. We talked back and forth. So they sent pictures of the camera, talked back and forth. Um, both of them only used it a couple of times. And actually, one guy had the off-brand EFRF adapter. He had, I think it's called the Viltrox adapter. The other guy had the Canon adapter. And quite honestly, I was willing to pay another hundred dollars i think it was for the canon brand just because the viltrex probably works fine it's probably great and it probably doesn't really have any issues but it was worth it to me to stick with the canon brand and use that brand of adapter because i knew i wouldn't have any issues with the viltrex you never know but i knew what i was paying for with the canon so the guy who had this said he basically took it on two shoots i think he just shoots recreationally and he had a Fuji camera before this, used this a few times, probably just couldn't get used to it, didn't like the menu, didn't like something about it, I don't know what it was, but just preferred his Fuji. So he said he only used it a couple times and was trying to sell it. So I ended up buying the camera, an extra battery, and the adapter, I think for $2,300. So I basically saved 200 bucks on the body, another $100 on the EF RF adapter, and another like $80 on the battery. So I saved almost $400 by buying this used. And it literally, I mean, it doesn't even have any scratches or anything on the base plate. Like th this thing is flawless. It's absolutely perfect. It's basically brand new. And I can still register it with the Canon full warranty and everything like that. So honestly, if you're looking at buying a new camera, I would really consider searching for something used just because you can save a lot of money and you can still get a solid product. The 1DX Mark II that we bought was used. We saved $1,500 on it. It's practically brand new, you know? But yeah, we got a great deal on this. I'm stoked to start using it. Um, let me know if you have any questions about it. I'll be reviewing it, I'm sure, here in a couple weeks after I get to completely test it out. Um, maybe shoot a vlog with it, who knows? Babin, if you're watching this, hit me up. Let's go to the snow again. You know, I know you didn't get enough of it last time. So let's go test that out. Um, but yeah, super stoked. Uh, I think this is going to be a great addition to our inventory, complementing the 1DX really nicely. But that's about it for me here today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, got to watch me unbox this beautiful camera here. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Really, really appreciate it. And if you would consider subscribing, that would be amazing. Looks like the 1DX battery is about to die, so I better wrap this up quick. 
Thank you so much for tuning in. Really appreciate it. We'll see you in the next one. Peace. Hey, Bridger. What are you doing, buddy? Huh? You napping? Are you napping? You like the new camera? Oh, big stretch. You tired? Yeah? Say please thumbs up the video. Woof. Say subscribe.